episode 122. Are these comics going to make good film and television shows? We got Gotham by Gaslight, the Kryptonian Age. We've got Pumpkin. And we have Fantasmic. Let's check them out right now. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Thank you so much for spending time with me as we rant about movies, comic books, and board games, as well as television shows. I'm uh, still doing some stuff on uh, House of the Dragon. You can check that out. I did one on the Acolyte, on why I'm not watching it. <laughs> uh, I am your host, Frank Zank. I'm an award-winning screenwriter, novelist, and comic book writer, and I am getting back to work on another script because we are going to do some horror. Uh, so yeah, uh, looking forward to getting back in that. I was trying to get back into my next novel, but, uh, that's not happening. But if you want to check out some of the stuff I have written, some of my novels and comics, you can see some of them behind me. Uh, they are in, at Amazon, uh, as well as a couple other sites. You can check out the description below for the link. But I also wanted to show you this, because I got this in from Hot Toys. Uh, since we are doing a Batman thing, uh, so this is the newest, uh, piece of my collection. This is, of course, Anne Hathaway uh, from Dark Knight Returns uh, playing Catwoman. I think they did a good job. I think the face is is decent. Anyway, I do all this stuff on layaway, so uh, you know, I only get them uh, every once in a while. I'll actually push it over so you can, she can pee in the background. There you go. Alright, so let's jump into Gotham by Gaslight. Uh, this is issue number one. This is actually a couple of weeks old. And uh, it's... Uh, I, I was a big fan of the original one, especially the suit that the costume they came up with, with the uh, the cloak. I thought that, you know, it almost looked like, you know, something out of Sherlock Holmes. I, I kind of really liked that. And uh, the, the buttons that they ended up using on the, on the front. The cartoon, I don't know if it really captured the comic well enough uh but this one is starts a, a little bit differently because instead of uh kansas it starts at kansa uh it is a tribal territory and this is in 1800s and it starts out i guess with ma and pa kent going across the country because kansas didn't exist yet i guess and a meteor hits uh but it's not a baby uh, so there's a here's the capsule that opens up, and it's it has something else in it that we find out later, and then the uh, Indian tribe uh, shows up there. So that's just like a cold open. Anything else for the rest of the thing has nothing to do with that. So now it goes with I guess this is you know where the alleys or whatever that you know Catwoman you know kind of lords over, and she's kind of walking down the street. She sees some. A uh, woman with a child that, you know, can't really eat because they don't, can't afford it. So she gives them some money and tells them to go to a shelter and see the woman that she gave them a card for. So I forgot the name of the uh, the alleys or whatever alleyways that she kind of lords over the part of Gotham. Um, that's, that's not called the slums. I forgot what it's called. Uh, but anyway, so it's like that. So she ends up going to this party at like the Met or whatever of the 1800s. But she has nefarious uh, things going on. Of course, she's Catwoman. And nobody is really happy to see her there. They know that she's kind of low class. And even though she might have some money. So she has her, her friend in there as well. And of course, there's going to be a switcheroo going on. Because she's there to steal something. So she takes her, uh, her clothes off and basically gives it to... Her friend, while she turns into the Catwoman character, she puts like stuff on her feet so that she can climb up the walls and things that effect. And she has a little bit of a Zorro look with the the mask and things to that effect. And then we have this woman that's giving a speech in lieu of Bruce Wayne not being there. Ah, Bruce is not here, so I'm here to tell you a story. And then we see Gotham. Uh, God, we have Catwoman, you know, climbing up the walls. She takes part of the little flower out and she ends up stealing the Kryptonian ring, which I guess is made of kryptonite. She's like, oh, it's so pretty and glowy. It's blinky. 
So she gets outside, and I love how they introduce Batman there, where he is literally upside down, <laughs> staring at her. And I guess that she goes and meets the Penguin, uh, their version of the Penguin, and she is there to sell it. So, you know, we have a little power struggle going on, and she's there for diamonds, and she hands him over the ring, but is it really the ring, or is it not the ring? So it's later described the fact that there's just glowy paint on it. I don't know where they would get glowy paint back in the day, but there they are. But suddenly, everybody is hit by arrows. Oh, no, there's arrows everywhere. Not the arrows. And, uh, yeah, the arrows build, kill just about everybody. And uh, the League of Assassins is there, but Batman shows up and throws knives and bombs, just like Batman would normally do. <laughs> So anyway, he fights the League of Assassins, and uh, Catwoman kind of helps him a little bit, and she says, you're welcome, even though he was, the only reason he's even there is because of her. So he gets some fights on a, on a train, like, you know, any other trope that we would be, and he's fighting them all, and he throws them off the train, etc. And Batman himself is wounded, and stands before who is revealed to be Talia al Ghul. So, there's that. So, there, I think, I don't know where this is going to go yet. Uh, so far, the first one is far superior. But uh, I'm willing to see where this one goes. Uh, I do like the time period. So, for that, I will continue uh, on it. And, you know, they're trying to re-instigate the Elseworlds thing, but, you know, Elseworlds used to come out, like, maybe twice a year, you know, two different titles, maybe a year, and now they're doing this one, they're doing, like, two or three others back to back to back. I don't know why. Uh, that's not how it used to be, but Elseworlds, you know, came up with some really good stuff. It was, like, Speeding Bullet, and, uh, you know, there was the, uh, Red, uh, Superman Red, where he was, you know, grown up as a, uh, you know, as an, as a Russian instead of, I forgot what that was called. Uh, but, you know, that, you know, there's a lot of good stuff came out of Elseworlds. And, uh, oh, that's right, they're doing the, uh, the Tom Taylor one with about the medieval, uh, the, you know, the Knight Steel Knights, uh, Knights of Steel or whatever. And, uh, so they're doing a sh offshoot of that in the winter time, of course, you know, based on Game of Thrones or whatever. So they're doing that, and they're doing a couple of others, but I'm like, why are you flooding the market with these Elseworlds? You haven't done them in, you know, decades, and now suddenly you're just going to do drop a whole bunch of them. It's just weird. All right, so let's jump into Pumpkin. So these are two Kickstarter books. So this is number three by Obscura. Uh, this is a revenge, supernatural revenge story. Uh, so you had high schoolers, that picked on this one girl. The jock told the whole school that he had slept with this girl and kind of ruined her reputation. And then, you know, all the girls jumped on her ass about it and made fun of her. And then I guess it was an accident, but a couple of the other girls did end up killing her and burying her. And of course, it's like, you know, what you did last summer situation where they're hiding it. Don't do that. It's bad for horror movies. You're going to get screwed. And that's what happens. So at the jock's party, a woman that looks like, and I kind of like the design, uh, that looks like a pumpkin, uh, ended up uh, you know, uh, coming on to him and then reveals that you know, it's, it's her girl named Paige and that basically she's back from the dead. And he, uh, I love how she kills people. She ends up uh, cutting their heads off and then gutting the head and then putting a candle in it as if it's a jack-o'-lantern. So that's how the last issue ended. And uh, this is how this one begins because I guess uh, Jamie, who was at this point the star of it, is sent a picture from Chad, and that's Chad's head, you know, in his lap. And they're talking to Lene, who is the dark-haired goth one, who's kind of the bully. And I don't remember the blonde's name, but uh, the other one is Jamie. And, and Lene's like, no, nah, it's 
it's a joke, man. It's, it's Halloween. It's a joke. Of course, it's Halloween. It's always Halloween in these horror movies. So he's like, and where is Mao's? Because all four of them are involved in this accidental death. Uh, or accidental on purpose, I should say. <laughs> so she ends up, so there's Mouse, uh, whose name is Megan, and she sees something lingering back there, uh, but we don't know who it is, and she runs, and she runs right into Lene, who was just asking about her, and, you know, she's not, of course, a crisis of conscience has, you know, befallen her, and she's like, oh, I don't know about us, and, you know, Lene ends up, you know, punch her in the stomach and knocking the wind out of her. <laughs> because she nice like that. And then Jamie walks in and is like, what the hell are you guys doing? And Lene basically threatens her and says, so you have a crisis of conscience also? And she's like, nah, I'm good, man. Get the fuck out of here. So now we see it kind of from Megan or Mouse's point of view, uh, which I don't know if we needed to see that twice. Uh, but... Lene pulls a gun on her, which we didn't see before, and the other girl says, try not to kill anybody, and she says, no promises, and, you know, Jamie just walks away. So, Jamie then drives away, but Megan jumps in the car with her, and as she's driving, she sees Paige in the backseat, or the ghost of Paige. Dun, dun, dun! The ghost of Paige! But, she disappears... But suddenly they hear something on the roof and Pumpkin turns, I'm just going to call her Pumpkin, uh, ends up putting her face to the windshield. And then we get this cool little scene where she, you know, she steps on the brakes and she flips to the front and throws the knife through the hood of the car or the roof of the car. And so there's the slamming of the brake and she goes through the windshield and she puts a knife through the windshield etc and they crash into a tree throwing pumpkin off but of course you know she's not dead she's supernatural but megan does the smart thing and says i'm getting the fuck out of dodge and she just runs <laughs> she's like i know these kind of movies and i'm not gonna be the first to go <laughs> So, uh, Jamie gets out of the car, but is immediately skewered by that big fucking knife. And it is thrown by Pumpkin. And she tries to limp away by removing the knife from her stomach, and she slides against the tree. And then she realizes that it's Paige, and she's like, I'm so glad you're alive, and I'm so sorry about everything that's happened. I hope you could forgive me, etc. But Pumpkin, you know, just smiles and says, who said I was alive? We uh, go back to Lene, who's having sex, and gets a text from Jamie, who she calls Dumb Bitch. And uh, that's who she names in the thing. And you can see that who I thought was the lead uh, character here is now dead. So, uh, would it make a good film and television show? Absolutely. I would buy the rights myself to make this. Uh, if I had the, the funds to do it. I, I think that the look of the character is very good. It's tropey. It's so tropey. I mean, this is stolen from every other horror movie in existence, but it's original in how she kills and things to that effect, and uh, I, I think it would make a really good little low-budget horror movie. So I would say thumbs up for that. I, I actually look look forward to these when they come up on... Uh, it's, it's, so, it's such a small plot, but I, I like it. So let's jump into Phantasmic. Uh, so this is number one of five. Uh, so this is about, I forgot the girl's name that's in here. Uh, but anyway, we start out like in, is it China or Japan? Hong Kong. So we start out in Hong Kong and it's a, the guy, he uh, has a picture of his daughter. And later we find out that he, uh, that the daughter is the main character and now she's an adult and he just hasn't seen her since she's been a child. But he gets uh, chased by a dragon and dies. And we end up, we end uh, on the picture of the child who now we see as an adult and she draws comics. So apparently the, the writer here is drawing from experience, apparently. Uh, and we're in New York and she's getting a job working as a artist on a comic book 
where it's aliens that take human form. So she has to draw the aliens and the humans. So we get this Frankenstein looking guy that kind of looks like an alien or it doesn't look quite look human, doesn't look, you know, that kind of thing. And then we have almost like an alien xenophobe, xenophobe from aliens. So anyway, she's going into the, the subway system and she's waiting for her train, but then sees the guy in the guy she basically just drew in the crowd. And then he disappears. She goes to see her mom. So she's a mix between uh, Asian and white. And, you know, her mom doesn't like her job. She thinks she needs to get a regular job. She calls her Catherine. And, oh, Kit. Her name is Kit. I uh, see. I remember that. She is, so she doesn't like her being called Catherine, but her mom always calls her that. And she basically tells her that her father is dead, even though they hadn't seen her, seen him in many, many years. And we get this cute little frame on the bottom, you know, of them kind of connecting finally. So they're on, uh, she's on now the subway again, and she's getting, you know, these hallucinations again. And there's the dude. And she keeps running because now he's turned into an alien. But we can see that no one else can see it. It's just her. She makes it home, and she's drawing the hero character of the comic book. But then she goes out with her friends, and she sees the hero at the bar. Apparently, obviously, nobody else can see him, because he would look kind of strange sitting at a bar with a staff and a costume like that. And the artwork is generally good. I can't really complain. And pumpkin as well is, is good. So anyway, so she runs out of there only to bump into one of the aliens that she drew who chase her. But the superhero character ends up saving her and she continues to run. And he, uh, he stops the alien from killing her again. So she doesn't learn the first time. Maybe she should hang out with the hallucination who's protecting her. So we have this battle go on. She makes it home. She sees uh, a picture of her parents, which apparently, you know, the dad had whatever issue this is too. Uh, but I'm wondering why this is suddenly kicking in now. Obviously, she's drawn things in the past and this has not happened. But it ends up with the alien uh, ready to chomp her head. And that's where it ends. Uh, so, of course, we've seen, you know, these kind of things where imagination becomes reality uh, especially with like writers that write stuff and it becomes reality. This is purely uh, on the other thing. But according to look at the cover, it, it's like she has powers herself. So I'm waiting for that to happen. Uh, but I, I'm going to reserve on this because it's you know, obviously it's something we've seen a million times before. But let's see if they do something different with it. So I'm going to say maybe on that one. Pumpkin, I would love to do myself. <laughs> And bought Gotham by Gaslight, uh, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I like the original one. Will this one do anything different? I don't know. I kind of like Talia al Ghul being in it, etc. But that's all I have for it at this point. It's been okay. All right. Well, that's it for me on this episode. I really appreciate you hanging out with me. Uh, give me the thumbs up. Give me a like. And if you can uh, ring that bell, ding, ding. Give me a subscribe if you can. It, it is free. Help me grow the channel out. I greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys on the next episode. Check out some of my other videos as well. And you guys have an awesome week. All right, bye-bye.